first order of business to discuss and vote on a request from highway superintendent to purchase a storage container for use at the highway garage. And we're being recorded, by the way. Okay, I, I can go ahead and since I wasn't able to make the last meeting, update you and tell you where things were at with this. Um, the location that I was looking at putting it is going to be out towards the salt shed and it goes parallel to Christian Lane, right at the toe of the slope. So if you were to look at the police station, it would be east of the police station, but down by the salt shed. So it will not be visible from the road and it will be, the door will be facing where our turnaround is at the salt shed so that we can have year round access to it. Um, presently, the mezzanine over the office gets stored, you know, used to store cases of chemicals, um, seasonal equipment, a lot of gas powered things, or hand to gas powered hand tools, saws, trimmers and things like that when they're not being used um, are put up overhead. Um, one of the other things that we do have, but it's not secure and it's not accessible in the winter time is the yellow barn next to the cemetery. Um, okay. I can't plow that and go in there in the winter time because it's just grass and it would just really make a mess to try to maintain that access year round to get in there to get to these things. Um, other things that I've looked at and considered was to, to use storage at, at the, you know, town offices on Sandy Lane. Um, I don't, I don't feel since we can't use the garage, if we could use the garage, that would be one thing, but the garage is being um, leased to New, New Pro or whatever the name of the company is. And so if I bring anything inside, I don't think that's the best thing because bringing in things with gasoline and hazardous materials in there, if something leaks or drips, it's going to really raise hell with the, you know, the air handling system blowing fumes into everybody's room. So I don't think that's the best thing to use the town offices for that type of stuff. Um, and then on top of it, you know, we just received the grant from the insurance company that we have some flammable storage containers that we were kind of, I was planning on putting into this storage shed, which will hold our chemicals and stuff when we buy a case of things and that we would be able to access that stuff and bring it in on a as be needed basis right now. Whereas when we get cases of chemicals, you know, like card cleaner and things like that and penetrants and lubricants, they all get stored up overhead. Um, the other thing too, in regards to the, to the storage shed is that it, I mean, the storage box is that it, when the time comes and I'm sure it's, it's gotta happen eventually where the highway department is being replaced that it would even be more, you know, helpful because no doubt about it, when the things need to be moved out of this building and potentially stored, it would be even more useful. Um, I don't know whether the fire department, mezzanine, whether John would potentially use a little of the storage space also because presently the storage box that's behind the fire station is now housing the two fire trucks that are in it, which is the muster truck and the Model A because they don't have any room to store those inside of the fire station. So um, storage is definitely of of the essence for me here at the highway department. Um, if I bring that stuff down from up top and put it in the bays, then it's just that much more clutter that we have to deal with. And I don't have enough storage space as it is because my garage is so small and where I need to be today as of today. So that's where I'm at. Um, I, uh, you know, I just feel that it's worthy a worthy purchase and that we will get our money's worth out of it. Okay. Keith, could you repeat again what you were storing there? I heard, I heard the uh, chemicals, I understand all that. What else, as far as I guess equipment, would you be storing in there? When we, you know, we have string trimmers, 
saws, chainsaws, things of that nature that we don't use, concrete cutting saws that we don't use in the in the winter time, we store up overhead in the over the mezzanine. And those are the kinds of things that I, you know, I don't feel safe in putting those at the yellow barn because they're of high value and the yellow barn is not secure. Okay. Okay. And if you store these chemicals in in this container, you plan on buying would the heat would they heat up? Would the heat be a concern? No, the the chemicals that we hurt you know, the purchase like do you know temperature, they're not temperature sensitive. So if they freeze, it's below freezing temperature isn't gonna bother them at all. What about heat on the high side? No, it, it's never. It's not going to get any hotter in that than it would in the overhead of the mezzanine. Okay. Really? Shouldn't get any. You know. You know. That, relatively speaking, it's not going to exceed the pressures that will. You know, temperatures that will give me problems. Oh. No, I mean the highway garage is at least a ventilated space. If this is a storage container, how well ventilated is it? That's not they have, me. They have um, ventilation systems, you know, that are cut into the sides of them. They ventilate. They, they, not an active system. It's not, it's not a complete airtight. But it's just, it's just passive ventilation then. Yes. Okay. So it's like leaving your car windows cracked. It's going to get as hot. Yes. As, uh, as a car might, but not an enclosed car, which can get really, really hot. Correct. Um, yeah, I, because that, that is, I mean, it's a black box and I don't think the highway garage would be considered a black box in any, in any sense of the word. Now, would, would this be close enough to the, to the slope on Christian Lane that it would, what, would be in the shade part of the day? Yeah, we got those trees that are down there, and so yes, it would be. In fact, you know, with the trees that were planted for the cell tower to block the view of the cell tower from the road, they'll uh, they will offer a lot of shade to it. Yes. Okay, and the the access doors to it would be facing the I ninety one or facing yes. the other way. The doors would face I ninety one, which is right where the pavement ends where we have our turnaround at the salt shed when we drive in so i can easily maintain access to it year round okay and i don't know if it, i missed it in the beginning what size are you look are you looking at 40 feet 40 feet by what, what's the other dimensions um they're they're standard storage they're eight feet i believe it's eight or eight and a half feet wide Eight and a half by 40, you said? Yes. That's big. In, inside measurement, it'd be like eight and a half feet. High and width. Have you seen the storage box that's behind the fire station? Yeah. Be pretty much identical to that. And that's been there for probably going on 15 years now. Okay, what's what's the cost we're talking here? Um, as twenty seven hundred dollars, I believe, delivered. And I would have to just do a little site work. Minor, you know, I I already have gravel on hand. I would have to put a little gravel down beforehand. But so really, there shouldn't be any additional expense other than the cost of the box. And when could you get it? Um, within a few weeks, it'd be delivered. Okay. Uh, right now, as it stands, the way I have things with OSHA was we had told them that the mezzanine would be abandoned by September 1st, I think it is. Okay. Is this going to affect our insurance at all? And to ensure the, the contents or ensure the box, you mean? 
Yes, either or both. Uh, um, that I, I, I don't know. I mean, what I will say is I wouldn't, there's going to be no electricity in there. Um, while there is flammable, there is a potential, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, feel it needs to have any additional insurance on my end. I think, you know, when you're, you know, certainly like in the town's case, thousand dollars deductible. And by the time you pay a premium, if something should happen, then we just absorb it. You know, I, that would be my opinion. I don't think it's worth insuring. Okay. I mean, let me say this much. We have, I'd be willing to bet we have no insurance on the contents at the Yellow Barn. Right. And if there's anything that should be insured, it should be the contents at the Yellow Barn because the stuff that goes in there is, you know, much more expensive. How about the, the salt storage shed? What What's in there? And then in the in the salt shed? Use the store? got sand and salt in it okay i'm okay with this four thousand you said chief no it'd be twenty thousand under, under three like 27 85 it was oh. like yeah i'm okay with this okay we need to take a vote on this brian I think yes, please, is what he's trying to say. He's nodding his head. You can't see him nod his head, so he's nodding his head. Okay, yeah, so we'll did. call vote. Jonathan? Yep. Joyce? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay, moving on. Next item. Um, I just thought we should just, the last time um, this came up under town administrator updates, um, and it's to discuss and vote on a request from the chief of police to implement the body camera program for the Whitley Police Department. Um, I think it would just be good to have the board on record as to. Okay. I'll, um, I'll make a motion to I'll make a motion to approve the body cam on our police uh, force. I'll second that. Okay, and everything was is the same as he presented to us the last meeting. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, nothing has changed at all. Okay, roll call vote. Jonathan? Yep. Joyce? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay, moving on. Um, the next one was for, uh, it's kind of bookkeeping, but this is to amend the, the definition of the licensed premises for the way we in. And I had sent out a motion earlier. I don't know if you guys got that. Yeah. Or, um, yeah. Just, just looking for it. Just talks about the dimensions mostly. Yeah. Um, let me pull that. Is that meeting reminder? It was in, no, it was in an email yeah. a couple hours ago. There we go. I see it. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, can I make a motion then? <laughs> Uh, I move uh, to amend the description of the license premises for the Waitley Inn's alcohol license to include an outdoor tent, approximately 20 feet by 30 feet, located in the front parking lot of the establishment. This amendment shall be retroactive to June 1st, 2020, and will expire November 1st, 2020, or until the governor rescinds the order clarifying the progression of the Commonwealth phased workplace reopening plan and authorizing certain reopening preparations at phase two workplaces issued June 1st, 2020, whichever is sooner. Second. Good. I, I didn't, I lost some of your discussion, Joyce. What were the dates again, the effective dates of this? I know that June 1st till when? Uh, November 1st, 2020. Or, I mean, that would be the latest. The governor, uh, if he were to rescind the order that would allow this to, to take place, then it would end on the date he rescinds that order. Right. Okay. Yeah. So those dates are, those are the dates provided in the guidance document from the uh, ABCC. 
um, as to when they're willing to grant this extension of um, mm -hmm. outdoor spaces for licensees. Okay, I've had it with that to a gate. I think that's Jonathan. Yeah. Well, uh, we do a roll call vote? Yeah. Okay, Jonathan? Yes. Joyce? Yes. Fred? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Next item to discuss hiring for the vacancy at the highway department. So Keith Bryan's leaving. Brian Belder's leaving. Yes. Yeah. He, is, he is leaving as of his last day is um, June 17th, and he starts his new job on June 20th. That would be July, right? Yeah, I'm be sorry, July. July. Yes. July. Yes. July. yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. So at this point in time, um, you know, the way I look at it, by the time we advertise and then by the time we can get interviews done, it'll already surpass the 20th. Uh, 20th July. of month. Of his date of departure. Is it 20th, 20th of July, July talking about now? Or yes. July 20th is his, well, July 20th is his first day on his new job. July 17th is the last day for employment right. in Waitley. Yeah. So are you just looking for, do, does he actually, do you actually need permission to start looking while he's still here? Or isn't that, that's just good practice, isn't it? I'm not sure. That's why I asked Brian to bring it up on the agenda for tonight, today. Yeah. Oh. The, board, as, the, the board is the one that's responsible for the hiring. Oh. As, as, the, as the liaison to the highway department, I would encourage Keith to post for the job in his normal places um, and have him go through, the, as we did with, with the last two hires, have him go the first round, um, sort through the resumes, send me and Brian his recommendations for interviews. Uh, me and Brian will, will interview, I guess, via Zoom at this point, um, unless somebody has a better idea, and we'll use the same process as last time in an expeditious way. You know, it's, that sounds good to me. And just to let you know a little bit, it, he's not leaving because of him disliking the job or having any issues. It's certainly, it's it's monetary. He's making more money. Yeah. And the the new hiree, would would it be, a, I don't know, is Brian the entry, entry level or is he higher and you're going to have to adjust your no. people or not? Nothing will change. Brian was scheduled to get a adjustment upon his three year anniversary date, which that won't take place at this point. So um, I will actually have more money in my budget. Uh, you know, I'll have excess at the end of the year because he, he won't, the new employee will be back at starting pay. Right. And you won't get him hired by then anyway. Probably there's going to be a lag time, yes. Okay, well, that's my yeah. suggestion as the rep, as the liaison. Okay, that sounds reasonable. It sounds like just plain old good practice to, to um, start looking immediately, uh, anticipating that it takes time to hire. And okay. We'll be lucky if you have somebody by the 20th, honestly. Oh, very. Okay, it looks good to me. Go ahead with it. Yeah. And then the last one is the Chapter 90 request for the excavator lease purchase, which um, we I think he's seek, seeking approval, and then we'll have to arrange for signing. Well, didn't we actually give that approval when we did the overall budget? So. I, yeah, I thought we approved yeah, but it in the town meeting. I, I think you, didn't, that one. you didn't want to sign it 
until after oh. town meeting. Okay, then we just have to sign it. We don't have to read yes. it again. Okay. Uh, Brian, do we do that electronically like the last document or do we need to come in? I think that one, I think they need wet signatures, I think, for chapter 90. I got any, I need two, at least two signatures. Do you need them tomorrow or can you, or what's the deadline? I mean, the sooner the better is for me. Um, do you have the document in electronic form, Brian? Um, Keith, Keith is the one who has the documents, but he looks frozen. Just, oh. Yeah, I was gonna say, if you had a PDF, you could email me. I can print it right now, sign it, and I can drop it off at the town offices for the next person to sign first thing tomorrow. That that's one way I can think of to get it done maybe faster than usual. It was. But I don't know if Keith can send me a PDF right now. It was in Brian's office. Isn't that still where it is, Brian? I gave it back to you in that folder when we Did met. You? For okay. Road. Okay. All right. Oh, then, so it's not a PDF, an actual physical piece of paper. I I can come in tomorrow, Brian, and sign it. But I, this question is. There are warrants for payroll to be signed this week, and what day would that be? Um, I know I, I signed them at the at the annual town meeting, but is there one coming up this week? And um, I'd have to look. I don't think so. If you did one last week, then we wouldn't be doing one this week. Yeah. Well, I don't know no. for what week the last week one covered, I guess, but. Okay. No, I don't, no, there's not one this week. I mean, another thing I could do is I could, I can, if, if it's okay, I can come to someone's, to the residence and hand it off and let it be signed or however we want to do it. Yeah, I mean, I can also come over first thing in the morning. So if that. Okay. And they're just mostly where where is the document? I don't want to show up at nine o'clock and find it. It's not there. <laughs> well, I mean, I have. If it's it's in my hands, I have it. I don't oh, okay. Get it. Okay. I don't care. Just so, someone tell me when I should show up. Does it matter whether we sign it at Keith's office or Brian's office? Brian's office. That's fine. So do you want me okay. to bring it there then? Sure, just drop it off at the town offices. Okay, I have, it right in my, I have it right in my hand and I will bring it to the town offices first thing in the morning. Okay. Perfect. All Great. right, very good. And I'll, I'll be there late morning probably to sign it. I have to go see Cynthia, I think so. Okay. Right. Okay, anything else, Brian? The items not anticipated and adjourn. I uh, move I have one, one quick item. We, we talked the next meeting July 15th. Uh, yeah. And we weren't sure whether all of us could be available. I may have a conflict uh, that day that week. Could we just move it to the, the following week, the 22nd, and, and call that our meeting for July? Uh, it won't, it won't, uh, yeah, that, um, it, the the thing I would um, worry about in that case is that uh, one of the things on our July agenda is to talk about the community policing um, document um, about the strategies updating that, and that's sort of a two-parter. That's one where we should discuss it. Um, and it may be that we need to amend it. How confident are we that we could amend all of that in real time um, and have that ready to go? Because that has to be done by July 31st or maybe July 30th because it's 30 days from when the chief's uh, contract goes into effect. Um, so that's my worry there. All right. Well, I am available on the 15th now, so. And uh, I am available on the 15th. Okay. Um, well, okay, we'll leave it for that. Leave it for that date right now. I would uh, hopefully know in the next, uh, by the end of the week, what I have to do. Okay, and if you have input on that, and if you, it turns out you can't come, 
to absolutely send your input to Brian, right? Um, and we can put that in. You know, we can put, make that be a part of the discussion. Okay, and Brian is off starting this what, Friday and won't be back until the week of the 15th, right? Um, week of the 13th, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll leave it at the 15th at, at 6 p.m. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds good. Okay. okay. Motion right. return. Thank Second. you. Second. All in favor? Aye.